Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create dimension in Illustrator using multiple fills for a single shape. Before we get started with this effect, let's look and see what it is that we're seeking to achieve. What I'm going to do is show you how you can use the Appearance panel in Illustrator to create a dimensional look to a shape in Illustrator. This background rectangle has not only a solid color fill, but it also has a pattern and a vignette. And they're all in this single shape, so when I move the shape, all of the fills go with it. To create this effect in Illustrator, I'm going to start with a new landscape size document and I'm just going to size this down so that I can arrange my palettes on the screen a little bit more neatly and I'm going to press Control or Command 0 to just square up the artboard in the window. So we're going to start with a star shape so I'm going to click the star tool and I'm just going to hold my mouse pointer over the center of the image. I've got a center indicator now, a smart guide there so I can just hold Shift and Alt and drag out a perfect five-pointed star. So I'm going to start with my star there, just let go of the left mouse button and then let go of the other keys. Now I'm going to give this no fill at all because I want to stack these on top of each other so that I can see them. So now let's go and get the ellipse tool because I can use that to draw a circle. Again, trying to intersect with the middle of the star, hold Shift and Alt and draw outwards. You'll see that this is drawing a circle that goes perfectly through the star. I want it to be a bit larger, but we know that it's now centered over the star. I'm going to let go the left mouse button and let's go and do that all over again. Again, lining up the center, the intersection between these two shapes, going out and pulling yet another circle out. And I've got one more to do. So that's the shape that I'm going to be working with and right now none of these objects have fills in them. So I'm going to target the direct selection tool, click on the outermost shape and I'm going to open up my swatches panel. I'm just going to use some of the swatches that I already have here and here's my blue shape. Now this shape is over the top of all of the others because it's built up from the innermost layer. The, the star is at the bottom and then each of the circles is successively over the top. Now we can change that by going to Window Layers and I can open up the layer that is this document and here is the star at the bottom and here is my blue filled circle at the top. All I'm going to do is drag it down and so that drags it to the bottom of the layer. This means that the other shapes are now over the top of it. So let's go and get this inner circle, the most innermost circle. I'm going to fill that with a red color. And again, I'm going to move it down underneath the star. And now I want this outermost circle and I'm going to fill it with a gradient. So I'm just going to place it underneath the star so that we can see it. And it's also going to be underneath the red object because we want it cut off. To add a gradient for this I'm going to use a metallic gradient. So first thing I want to do is to see all my swatches because I want to see gradient swatches as well. I'm going to go and pick up the gradient. So I'm going to click this fly out panel, open swatch library, go to gradients and I'm going to look for the metals. And here are my metal gradients. Let's just pull them over here. I'm going to apply the gold radial gradient to this. Now I was selecting the wrong shape when I did that. So let's undo the swatch. Let's make sure we have the right shape selected and let's apply that to it. I'm going to apply it also to the star. So I'm going to target the star, which I can do by either clicking the direct selection tool and click on the star or I can just click here to select that layer. So if I'm working in the layers palette, sometimes it's easier for me just to select the shape by just clicking here opposite the shape so that we're actually selecting it. And now I'm going to fill it with this gold radial gradient. Now the gradient isn't quite working for me. So with that star shape still selected, I'm going to click on the gradient tool. And that brings up the gradient tool that I can now use to adjust my gradient. So for example, I can move it 
off the edge of the star so that the lightness is coming in from a point beyond the star. So let's see how that looks now. It's a little bit different. Now we're going to add a background and the background is going to be textured. So we're going to select on the rectangle tool and I'm just going to create a rectangle behind this shape that is the same size as the artboard. Let's just move our swatches out of the way. Now, and control zero to center this all up. Now this has gone on a layer above everything and I would really like it on its own layer. So I'm just going to click to create a new layer and I'm going to move that rectangular path up and drop it onto layer two and I'm going to pull layer two all the way below layer one. So it's now a background. And of course, because I had the star shape already created with this metallic gradient in it, that's happened or that's been applied to the outer shape, this big rectangle as well. That's not what I want. So I'm going to select a sort of orangey yellow for that. And now we're going to start building up our textures here. So to do that, I need to be able to see my appearance panels. I'm just going to hide these bits with this layer and in particular this path selected, I'm going to choose Window Appearance. Now the Appearance panel gives me access not only to the current stroke and fill. So for example, I could come in here and I could remove the stroke from the outer edge of this rectangle or I could come in here and change the fill color. So I could select, for example, a more sort of orange color, but it also allows me to do things like add new fills. So here is an add new fill button. I'm going to click it and this allows me to add a second fill. So what I can do here is add, for example, a pattern over the top of this shape. So I'm going to go and find a pattern to use. I'm going to open the flyout panel, open the swatch library, and this time I want to go for patterns. Here are patterns. I can get basic graphics, decorative or nature. I'm going for basic graphics because this gives me access to some basic graphics textures and these will allow me to texturize the back of this shape. Now all I need to do is because I've got this fill, this second fill layer selected, all I need to do is to now select these patterns and just say what it is that I want to use for my shape. And there are lots of patterns that we can use and I've got one here that's a little bit of sort of it's sort of like drawn angles and it's really quite a nice pattern. Now having filled that shape with that pattern you can see that we're seeing the yellow background underneath that's actually coming through from that color this pattern can actually be transformed. So let's just make it visible again. With that selected, let's go to Object Transform Scale. And this allows me to scale my pattern. So I don't want to transform my object. I don't want to scale strokes and effects, but I do want to transform my pattern. I'm going to go to Preview and let's see what this pattern looks like at 200%. It's a lot bigger. So we have the ability now to scale our pattern within the object that we're using. Now I really want it quite small, so I'm just going to make it 75%. But just came in here to show you that you do have options once you've applied a pattern. And we do have even more options because we can use additional fills. So I can come in here and click Add New Fill. And this time we can add a vignette effect using a fill going to click the drop down arrow, open up the panel here, go to my swatch library and this time I want gradients. So I'm going to click on gradients and then I can select from these gradient options. And there are lots of different gradients that we could use. Fades is a good one. You can also use tints and shades and even vignettes. Now since I want a vignette, I'm going to select the vignette one, but simple radial would also be a potential that we could use. So here are my vignettes and I'm just going to test the vignettes by just clicking on them in turn and just see what I can get. Now this vignette is pretty good, it's just not exactly in the place where I want it to be, but a vignette is just a gradient so if I click on the gradient tool I can then adjust it. So I'm just going to enlarge it. 
because I want to pull the gradient off the artboard so that it is affecting just the very edges of the image. So I think that's a pretty good result here. Now our fills are also adjustable so if I click down this opacity option here not only can I make the fill less opaque for example down to 80% I can also change how it blends in with the underlying image so if I use color burn for example I'm going to get a different effect to using normal. So as you can see there are lots of ways that you can create more sort of interesting backgrounds and even use those options for these shapes in Illustrator. You don't have to have flat colour and it is very easy to layer these fills on top of each other. I'm Helen Bradley, thank you for joining me for this YouTube video. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing so that you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on Illustrator, Photoshop, Lightroom and a whole lot more.